the uh, all of you have all of us have heard the name of the company called reliance and geo these names are synonymous with things that uh, are of scale of things which have never been attempted in india and uh, things that uh, and the need of the hour or the india a country needs a country like india with a 1.3 billion population needs things which are uh, built for scale which i have never probably never been tried anywhere in the world uh, uh, and so that it can address the vast population and at, at also uh, take into account the digital divide that exists in india and in the uh, uh, current scenario artificial intelligence is gaining prominence and has uh, reaching everybody's lives uh, if not today tomorrow if we are all going to be impacted or being uh, felt the presence of artificial intelligence very soon so who uh, who is the best person to learn or hear from uh, regarding the application of ai and api and also with a flavor of in, in india specific context joining us will be dr shivani rai <coughs> uh, talking to us on ai and api made for each other uh, she uh, is part of the ai team at geo uh, she has over two decades of experience in uh, across industries and is she's an expert in cognitive computing machine learning and ai driven automation welcome shivani Thank you. Thanks, Prashant. And very happy to be a part of uh, this session. Uh, this looks really good. And uh, I'm pleased uh, uh, to be part of uh, such a session where uh, you're bringing all the industry leaders in one forum and uh, uh, bringing this knowledge into one uh, platform. So thank you for uh, uh, acknowledging me. It's a pleasure. So can you uh, make your slides into full screen mode? Uh, right. I hope it is visible now. Yes, it's visible. Yes. OK. Oh. So uh, thank you, uh, Prashant. And just to give a little more introduction about myself, uh, uh, I have nearly uh, uh, two decades of experience uh, in this industry. Uh, I started from uh, where when it used to be called analytics or statistics, uh, statistics to analytics, analytics to uh, data science. And now uh, we all uh, very know, uh, I think very well know about uh, what uh, AI can uh, do and uh, bring to the uh, um, enterprises uh, to not only to uh, automate, but also to bring lots and lots of intelligence uh, into uh, the system. Uh, so I have worked with uh, multiple organizations and uh, now I am uh, in uh, Reliance and the sole reason is how can I take the AI and probably deploy that into a, a, a kind of a diversity what we have in India, because uh, I think uh, we can uh, learn AI can give a lot of things to India, but uh, on a reverse, India can also give a lot of things to AI because of its diversity, because of the challenges what we uh, face in day-to-day -day life uh, uh, with respect to data, with respect to languages, with respect to diversities, with respect to the population size. I think it gives a lot of uh, flavor uh, for uh, people to learn uh, from what India can offer in the space of AI. So uh, uh, I'm going to talk uh, more uh, in terms of how uh, the AI and API world is uh, gelling together to bring uh, best of the, uh, you can say, qualities of uh, both the scenarios. And uh, because I come from a uh, banking industry or uh, the financial industry, there will be some flavor of uh, uh, financial industries uh, in the uh, section. So uh, I think I've kept it very uh, simple to give you some flavor about AI and then API and then how it uh, gels together. Uh, so if I just uh, probably start with uh, uh, what is the industry uh, uh, expectation from AI? So uh, when uh, we uh, look from the market research perspective, the, uh, it has been said that uh, it can bring uh, nearly savings of $1 trillion just for US market uh, for financial industries, which includes the banking, investment banking, and the insurance industry. So that is uh, probably one uh, big phenomena which is happening uh, 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 in uh, in the system where uh, we are not only trying to automate things with AI, where for example, uh, we have we are very uh, uh, aware about two minute instant noodle, but uh, have we heard about two minute instant loan? 
that doesn't exist in majority of the uh, you can say uh, geographies at this point of time but we are expecting that to be deployed and uh, available for people to use probably in majority of the markets uh, in next to 2 to 3 years time where the time you uh, push your documents everything will process probably in a minute a minute and half and you will not only get the uh, loan approval but even the first installment of your money will be transferred to your bank account so that's the kind of complexities we are expecting uh, ai to bring into the uh, financial industry sector in coming years uh, if i talk about how the uh, 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 financial industry is uh, separated into multiple parts uh, so uh, i think automation and ai is uh, getting into all the different areas you talk about uh, front offices i don't think there are any financial industries which have not utilized uh, chatbot or voice bot uh, so much uh, so far and uh, that biometric authentication uh, started probably 20 years back in financial industries now all other industries are also utilizing it middle office anti fraud kyc am aml this is probably the 30 or 40 years uh, old uh, phenomena but ai is uh, bringing uh, probably the additional nuances how can you utilize the entire big data sector for these kind of a uh, use cases that is the place where ai is bringing uh, uh, the intelligence also how can you utilize for example graph analytics the neural networks uh, of the world to identify these uh, very very uh you can say a uh, 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 discrete cases uh, from the system a uh, back office uh, this is the place which uh, was backbone of uh, the financial industry like credit writing uh, or risk underwriting and that is the place where still we see there is a lot of scope to adopt ai models because of rules and regulations uh, or compliance uh, the acceptability of ai models have not go gone to the stage where it should be but i think uh, we are taking baby steps in that industry where uh, it will take it to probably it will take some time for uh, 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 compliance and regulations to open it up and then uh, probably adopt it in this area so this is probably a bigger uh, opportunity area which i am talking about in uh, financial services but uh, the similar is the case for uh, other industries also though the banking or probably financial industry has adopted uh, analytics or ai very very long back but still uh, ai has not reached the scalable uh, uh, portion still we are at a stage of analytics where these models are developed by humans and the, there is a long cycle of model building to model deployment and that's the place where apis are coming into the picture how can we automate the end to end process uh, to give you a, a, a faster turnaround uh, a solution which can be developed in uh, probably rather than uh, waiting for 2 uh, uh, to 3 months time to develop a model but can be uh, built it uh, uh, probably in a couple of weeks uh, this is just uh, probably a glimpse of the very very important use cases uh, which are available in uh, banking or financial uh, uh, sector uh, either it is customer focused or operations focused or trading or regulatory compliance focused um, or uh, for example insurance how can you Uh, make a uh, uh, claims processing right so claim processing used to happen manually uh, till 3 or 4 years back but now majority of the insurance operators are going to a stage where it can be automated and there are very very less human interventions and human touch points in this industry even for example uh, you would have seen a lot of advertisements where uh, Uh, if you have a car uh, um, accident uh, you just need to probably take pictures of your car uh, and send it to, uh, for the claims processing to the insurance company and uh, majority of the uh, assessment uh, of the accident can happen through uh, computer vision technology to understand uh, uh, what kind of parts have been broken and what could be the uh, uh, damage and uh, uh, claims uh, uh, one can think about uh, um, procuring it so these kind of things are uh, getting in a automated space where uh, people are moving forward to adopt and enhance this uh, capability and uh, ai is playing very uh, big role in terms of uh, uh, not only automating the system 
but also bringing the intelligence where humans can brought into the picture where they are really needed where there is a high uh, end uh, intelligence work required rather than taking the business rule driven decisions which machine can take much faster much better than uh, what humans uh, uh, can do uh, at a larger space so this is uh, probably if you see the right hand side box these are the different type of use cases one where people are thinking about uh, adopting and deploying in uh, into different time frame if you look uh, uh, where we are in uh, 2020 or 2021 it is a hyper personalization area but as we move forward uh, we are going to uh, go to probably uh, edge computing and edge applications also so uh, when we are going to probably open an app on your our uh, mobile phone it is going to calculate everything for us so uh, this is the space probably where you can put your loan information in your uh, machine and uh, in your phone and uh, it would be give you a very very specific model on the basis of what all you do on your mobile phone and uh, give you, uh, going to give you a kind of a uh, a loan application sanction as well as uh, what kind of interest rate uh, one can offer in this industry so those are the upcoming uh, you can say opportunity areas which uh, are going to change the dynamics covid has changed the adoption uh, uh, big time i think two years back uh, we haven't thought that uh, all the industries uh, can operate from home uh, without uh, much of a uh, uh, difference but we have learned that not only that uh, uh, the customer adoption for the uh, digital uh, journey uh, has moved really fast in last uh, one year and uh, we are expecting that will remain not drop too much once we come to normalcy uh, after covid so that's the thought process uh, i hope uh, uh, we uh, are able to come to that stage where people will go to uh, branches uh, uh, less and less and uh, uh, do majority of the work uh, using the app, uh, app, apps or uh, you can say uh, websites uh, uh, as I was talking about uh, the uh, majority of the issues where the industry uh, is, it is not on adoption of AI, but the scalability of AI. And these are the, uh, uh, I think we, uh, that is the place where API is uh, getting, a, uh, taking a bigger space where not only uh, it is helping um, uh, uh, the uh, enterprises to build the model in a shorter turnaround time, but also to deploy the models in a shorter turnaround time. So if you see the uh, entire ecosystem of how the AI model works, right, it starts with the very, very uh, uh, initial stage of can business adopt uh, these, uh, uh, you can say, use cases, these uh, AI models. How can we build these AI models in a scalable platform? where uh, you are not building one use case at a time but probably 20 use case at a time and uh, all the 20 can go in production in uh, uh, you can say uh, without a, a seamless uh, interface uh, or uh, with a seamless uh, interface so those are the things which we require to make ai scalable either it is a data related platform either it is a model related platform either it, it is a kind of a deployment related platform all needs to happen into a, a, a kind of a mega scale uh, where people uh, uh, can see the changes happening on a day to day so in banking industry also uh, once we used to build model it used to take probably three months time uh, to build and deploy that uh, even test it for one one and a half month before it goes to full production so that was the journey uh, which used to take uh, to build and deploy but uh, uh, because uh, uh, AI changing the world in terms of uh, building and deploying process, we are seeing that things are moving probably uh, eight to 10 weeks. And um, we are expecting that uh, change to happen probably a week to one and a half weeks time interval uh, in coming future. So that's the change what is happening. The other challenges uh, which are uh, hindering this, uh, uh, you can say speed are, um, unavailability of the right resources so uh, if you see in last two or three years ai has gone to boom where anyone and everyone wants to get into a uh, part of the uh, ai world but that kind of talent is, uh, is still missing so a lot of i think uh, organizations are 
offering a cross uh, uh, skilling and upskilling uh, kind of uh, solutions uh, i think we are getting there but still there is a huge scope of uh, 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 a huge scope of uh, possibility where people can uh, bring their uh, caliper and join this industry last but not the least uh, uh, that Uh, open mind to adopt these changes uh, i think uh, when we started working in the field of ai uh, it was told to us that uh, building the model or deploying the model is easy part but utilizing that model on day to day uh, job is the extremely difficult part because people have to change the way they used to work a lot of people might have to change the kind of job they were uh, working and uh, they have to adopt the new changes so that change is uh, the biggest issue earlier i think we have crossed that stage where people are uh, the acceptance is uh, not that tough but still if uh, we talk about uh, accepting these models in bulk uh, we do see there are some challenges in terms of adoptability of the new processes altogether right if i uh, uh, the example what i was giving about 2 minute uh, uh, instant loan it's not going to be easy because a lot of people no need to change from the type of job they are doing today to a new set of jobs so yes it will uh, reduce uh, probably the number of people you require to uh, process a uh, end to end uh, uh, application for uh, loans or any uh, mortgage or uh, auto finance loans or etc but uh, it will it is going to give a huge uh, customer experience uh, where they don't have to run around with the uh, different offices different uh, branches and will be able to perform all the activities uh, within a couple of minutes of time so it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a, 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 a you can say you have to wait out uh, what kind of uh, things you want to give it to customer and what could uh, what kind of uh, things you want to give to the people who are working in those areas so it's always a kind of a upskilling game where people have to upskill where they are and then so that uh, they can uh, bring new opportunities for themselves and also able to perform in the area where machines are still uh, struggling or probably uh, not able to do things by their own uh i'll quickly talk about uh, uh, i think in terms of scalability where it used to be or how it used to be and where we are changing uh, the dynamics altogether so when we talk about uh, ai if you see uh, it in into a data uh, a layer right uh, uh it it's always been uh, on on the top right it used to be uh, on the cream where once you have to have a, a you can say a data lake a data warehouse then you will have a data management layer then you will have a bi layer where you all the reports are uh, calibrated and it used to come as the ai as top of the pyramid but because we want uh, to bring that scalability we will not be able to get that unless we put the ai into the core and that's the new concept where industry is going towards that okay you are not going to design your uh, platform lake uh, uh, your big data platform or your data lake on the basis of data but on the basis of the use cases what you can uh, develop on that particular platform and that particular lake so it starts uh, ai is probably ai use cases are the core to build the entire infrastructure you have to drive your platform using ai as well so when i talk about ai driven platform you have to have all the engineering part which supports the ai either it re uh, requires a kind of a, a infrastructure where you can run models within seconds or, or you have to have uh, the gpus of the world or you have to have uh, the you can say multiple uh, processing units where your models can uh, uh, work in a, a parallel processing system also when we talk about uh, uh, data a uh, part right earlier we used to do the uh, uh, data uh, you can say clarification data modification data cleansing and then we used to utilize the ai but now ai is doing all these activities as well so when we talk about the data cleansing part ai play is playing a big role where a uh, lot of things can be automated uh, uh, automated using the ai uh, models where it is not only doing a rule based uh, cleansing but because it has lot of intelligence which one can think about uh, incorporating it it is doing a 
intel intelligence cleansing where uh, people uh, don't need to spend that much time in the processing part of it similarly uh, i think the bi part where uh, we talk about uh, ai for bi which is the new thing which is coming up rather than we just build a dashboard can we summarize that dashboard as well using a natural language or a processing or a natural language uh, uh, understanding so nlp nlg uh, is coming as uh, uh, i think the new technologies where you can make your bi reports much more intelligent you can draw inferences you can summarize the reports etc using uh, these uh, capabilities so this is a new uh, 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 module or new era of uh, ai which is coming uh, into the picture uh, rather than working on one or two part we are working on the end to end pieces uh, i'll just uh, probably quickly talk about uh, how this interface is working right so we have talked about the ai use cases how can we build those ai uh, use cases to ai model and then build the api which Uh, uh, which is kind of a automated format uh, so if for example you are building a document ai right so uh, you would have seen a lot of uh, different players have uh, that as a uh, api which is inbuilt in their system so those are the pre trained model people have already built so uh, if you talk about it you start with ai uses use cases you build those uh, 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 ai models once those ai models are ready you just build develop those uh, open apis which can be consumed uh, for the next run of any document processing so that's the automation you are bringing in uh, uh, either you utilize api to uh, create a automation format or you utilize api to deploy those uh, models into the system so two uh, ways to uh, look into that into how uh, one can think about it um this is uh, probably uh, if we talk about uh, the top 10 uh, uh, ai apis which exist in the system these are the top 10 and each one brings a different flavor to the system if we talk about the first one and the 10th one the prediction uh, io and big ml these are the two uh, apis which gives you a platform to automate your uh, model building process and which can be done with a quick turnaround time so it has all the uh, automated layer where for example you are building ai models you can build probably 10 ai models in one run right with uh, uh, two or three clicks uh, in the system uh, if we talk about alexa skill management this is uh, probably uh, uh, all the voice bots uh, related uh, activities you can utilize uh, with um, this api summarize bot is uh, for example you want to do a analyst report summarization so uh, when you report a quarterly report of any enterprise can you run this and uh, which can give you a summarize report for like top 5 or top 6 uh, pointers from the uh, uh, you can say annual reports um if i talk about anaconda it is uh, used mostly to deploy the models indica is a kind of a intelligent automation platform where it is no it is a mix of uh, ai and rpa where you are trying to automate end to end uh, processes so these are the uh, probably uh, top uh, 10 apis which one should be aware about it one should be trying their hands to utilize these api so that it is easy for them to uh, work around with uh, uh, these uh, readily available models you don't have to uh, build uh, all the models from scratch um i'll uh, quickly uh, talk about uh, uh, the difference between uh, building a ai model and uh, probably utilizing uh, uh, the apis uh, directly so if you talk about a document processing part of it right so think about that uh, you have a bank loan application and you want to uh, uh, process that application so in a Uh, uh you can say uh, old age ai world you will have a ocr engine which will read and uh, uh, translate your uh, filled document or scan document or hand written document to a digital footprint uh, if you have uh, it in any other language you will translate that to english you will have a document classification engine which will identify that okay if you have submitted a pia information is it a aadhar card or a, a license or a, a ssn card or something else then you will have a entity extraction engine which will uh, uh, also do your uh, key phrase extraction your uh, entity uh, extraction your uh, uh, you can say key value pair extraction 
and then uh, probably once all the information is uh, incorporated uh, pulled it you probably fill the forms and then deploy this model using an api to your production engine so it's a long process once uh, you uh, if you are building everything from scratch this is the journey one has to go through it uh, to uh, probably build and deploy the model which generally take probably uh, takes uh, around 2 to 3 months time for one type of uh, uh, documents but if you want to do it in at uh, in, in a shorter turnaround time you don't need to build so many things you just scan the documents uh, pull any of the readily available api either it is a doc ai from google or form recognizer from azure or there are at least 20 30 apis for document processing in market which are pretty strong uh, well trained for majority of the general documents yes it does have a, a commercial element to that all the apis are not uh, open source but it simplifies your work to an extent so one can probably wait out the time you are going to consume versus the uh, 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 you can say savings you can do uh, while uh, going through these uh, apis so this is probably the shorter version of uh, Uh, building apis uh, uh, ai models using apis uh, by utilizing the readily available api which are available in the system uh this is probably the summary of what i wanted to talk about in terms of how does the api and ai will uh, work together i'm happy to take uh, any questions uh, uh, any one of you have in this uh, regard and uh, th thanks you vani for that those insights so just wanted to know um, uh, so you are talking about cross skilling um, and the up skilling so if uh, i am a technical person and uh, i want to and not get all into the ai or a analytics background uh, where do i start um i think there are a lot of courses which offer uh, uh, the uh, uh, i think the ai courses but see i think uh, one has to think from a broader perspective now because ai requires all type of skill set people so it's not that we require only data scientists the if we are talking mm -hmm. about ai at a scale we re require people with data management we require people with devops we require people from software development uh, engineers um, uh, ui people uh, your application developer so it's not that the data scientist is the only job which is coming up to support the ai ecosystem yeah. it is the okay. entire ecosystem which we require to make ai scalable all type of different skill uh, skill set yes you should know what exactly is uh, ai you can go through probably a couple of courses which uh, either coursera offers or a lot of different platforms are uh, offering uh, the courses to understand what ai is utilize your key capabilities to uh, uh, come into the picture where uh, ai uh, can be helped there right so everyone okay. don't need to uh, become a data scientist uh, it's not required also we require lot of other skill set to make this scalable okay great and uh, just from uh, um, you been part of uh, different industries and different organizations and uh, worked across uh, customers and uh, all uh, so just wanted to know which all are the three industries who are uh, the fast movers in the ai space in terms of ai adoption is it Uh, is it the financial sector very or difficult, very difficult to say i think uh, financial services has started big time in the analytics area but ai mm -hmm. they are still struggling because of uh, very uh, severe uh, regulatory and compliances where we can't uh, uh, remove human from the chain right because uh, financial right. sector is one uh, uh, risky sector uh, the compliances right. is still holding them very tight but i think uh, 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 retail has adopted really well e-commerce is like completely run uh, through uh, ai models you talk about your transportation sector like ola and ubers of the world have changed the way uh, they have adopted the ai uh, in the edge computing uh, format so i think we are growing uh, pretty big uh, i won't say one industry is lower than other but i think they are mm -hmm. going neck to neck uh, uh, in that area okay yeah um thanks a lot uh, shivani for joining us today and uh, sharing this your valuable insights and uh, looking forward to having uh, more sessions with you thank you prashant and uh, thank you for organizing thank such you. a wonderful session and happy to be part of this thank you, thank you.